Hello friends and welcome back to To Restore You. It is Angela with another episode of Thrifty Thursday sponsored by Sherry at Turquoise Dreaming. And a shout out to all of you who are returning subscribers and a thank you to all of you who are new to the channel and have subscribed. I appreciate you. Oh goodness, we have the... Okay, stop. Leave her alone. Sorry guys. Oh, yo, yo, puppy. Puppy time. Zenny is six pounds. She's five. Ruby is six months old and 45 pounds. And it is just, just they just do not get along. <laughs> Ruby wants to play. Zenny wants to be the alpha puppy. And it's an ongoing battle. Yes, you know I'm talking about you. So be nice. Be nice to one another. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, specifically today, I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, Mimi at Mimi's Keepsake. She is a fellow, uh, Thrifty Thursday participant. So if you haven't seen her channel, go and check it out. And we have a big haul today. So we'll go ahead and get started. I, uh, <clears throat> did a little auctioning and I was able to get, let me see, let me just put this aside. Um, a whole lot, a whole lot, a lot of Children's Digest. Like, when I say a lot, I mean this whole flat full. So, they did come with a very uh, robust vintage aroma, but the pages are so cool. Um, I'm trying to see. There's a couple that I looked through, and they were just so fun. Um... But they've got, you know, kind of a really cool vintage. Look at this one. Um, Pinocchio. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, how to make your own secret code. But there, it's just, you know, it's like Reader's Digest for kids. Um, the Pirate's Apprentice. So it's full of things that if you wanted to, you know, do a themed journal, you could certainly find it in here. Uh, I do probably need to put it in my bucket of goodness to see, put the whole, all, the whole lot of them in to my um, bucket. Oh, look at how cute that is. Um, to get a little bit of that scent out. But they're in really good shape other than, you know, the cover is a little bit, I don't know where it was stored, but they're a little worse for wear. Um, but I think what I'm going to do with these, oh, that is so fun. I think what I'm going to do with these is bundle like, you know, a certain number and then just sell them in the Etsy shop because there's such a variety. Um, let me just flip through a couple of these. Like here, here's one that's, you know, more, this is Kit Carson, um, but there's just such a variety inside. I love the old comics. Dr. Seuss is in here. Wow. That's kind of cool. There's stories. See, this is this would be really cool. She gave up on you, didn't she, Zenny? <laughs> Zenny has a little bed in here, and um, Ruby was laying right in front of it, like, "Come on, play with me." She's not having it. That's neat. That'd be fun with a quilt journal. But this was absolutely chocked full. I have, they range from 1953 all the way to, oh, I thought I put them in order, but I guess I didn't. 1953. It looks like to 1957. I think that looks like the oldest one. Um, <clears throat> and then there were also some of these primers in here. This is, these are all about, I thought this would be so cool. Um, like, especially if you're, whoops, upside down, like to do a kid's journal with robots and, you know, I don't know. I just thought it was really fun because I liked the cover. So I will probably put, um, some of the, I might put these in just as a bundle too, but there's just, I love the, the colors of the pages. I will have to say that this is, this haul um, this specific auction 
was probably my best as far as getting the most for um, my money. Oh, Rip Van Winkle. Which is always fun. And then, <clears throat> you know, you don't see what's this all about. Oh, there's another one. Picture word stories. I love those. The loony to me, or lonely. <laughs> loony. <laughs> Could be loony. Tomato. Science is fun. I mean, you could just do so many things with these. And can you imagine if I, I mean, if I had my druthers about me, how many journals I could make out of this? Wowza. So these will be going in my Etsy shop eventually. But um, if you haven't seen it, and I should probably write this down so I don't forget. Um, I do have a video on how to get the musty sp smell out of your... Um, ephemera and you know old books and things fabrics so I will add that on in the description if I don't call me out because I could forget um but they I usually keep them in there for several weeks um because they're not going in to the freezer which yes that's what I normally do <laughs> um it's I can't put those in my freezer even the one that I have down here that I don't think they'd fit um it takes a little bit of time. So, and the other thing I always tell people is if you get something for me, especially like a book or um, greeting cards that have been through that process, I do my best to get um, the, you know, it's got baking soda and some other things in it. And sometimes there's a little residue. Don't be alarmed. It is just things that you have in your kitchen. So I promise you that sometimes that's, I can't get, I don't, don't get it all out of there. But then I got this book, um, a child's book of dogs, which I really think this would make a cute, if somebody is a really big, this is going to go in the, the Etsy shop, unless somebody says, oh, I really think I need that in my life. Then you let me know. But the images are so adorable. Um, Here's a little sort of Zenny. Zenny's a cockapoo, so she's part poodle. Um, the images are just so, so beautiful. And I just think as it is with, you know, maybe just, you know, taking the spine apart and expanding it, I think you can make just a beautiful, look at those Irish setters. Aren't they adorable? Um, we used to have a Great Dane. Kind of look, well, we had a couple at different times, but they kind of look like that. We called her Puppy. She had a really long name, but we just called her Puppy. But I thought this would be great for someone who is a dog lover. Look at that little Boston Terrier. I don't see any Australian Shepherds in here. So, sorry, Ruby. Dachshund. We had um, neighbors that had a Bull Mastiff. Two, actually. Nicest dogs ever. Huge, but really awesome dogs. So, you know, the cover isn't in perfect um, shape whatsoever. It did have kind of a, protecti a protective cover over the top that was in really bad shape, so I took that off. Um, but this will go in the shop. Oh, here she comes. I, she's got a baby. Oh, this dog. Um, then I found this one, Paul Bunyan. This was all together in a bundle. Paul Bunyan, the work giant, and... This one, the spine is in pretty bad shape, um, but the colors are really cool. This is 1941, but look at that. There's Babe and Paul hanging out in the Northwoods. So these pages are pretty fragile. Um, you know, some are kind of loose, but gosh, I'm telling you, they're really cute. That dog needs to go for a big old long run. I can hear her upstairs running around. And Dave is on the phone. <laughs> so probably not giving her any attention. Those colors are just phenomenal. So this too will go into, look at that. The big Swede, Ole, invented the hole in the donut. Well, who knew? Ole. 
Hmm. So that cookies could carry them around on poles. Cookies? Hmm. Well, you learn a little something every day. So, I don't know. This is just super, super cute to me. Look at Lucky the Camp Cow. And she's got her snowshoes on. She's no dummy. Sport the Reversible Dog. This is a little bit scary. <laughs> oh. So, oh, what's that? just fun. I think, you know, somebody who lives in the Northwoods needs to have this in their life, so. Where is the, um, somebody who knows? I, th I think it's Minnesota. The home of Paul Bunyan. You know, they've got the big statue. Um, so then there were also, in addition to the dogs, there was one on fish, fishes, one on reptiles, which I don't, I'm not even going to open because, mm, this kind of reptile, mm, eh. but there you go. You can see some other pretty reptiles that will uh, see. I can't frogs are cool. <laughs> um, that will go into the shop. This one, I think I'm going to save because I have some of these fish look really scary, by the way. Like, look at, well, obviously it's a barracuda, right? And a piranha, but there's other ones that look kind of spooky too. I was like, oh. I mean, I like to fish and such, but, but there's some really cool, there's another one that I was like, what in the world? Um, I want to show you, I don't know if I can get to, to it, but, um, see like that. Mm, and that a swallow, a swallower, swallower, black swallower. It's like flower and swall. Mm. And look, that. That looks like a catfish, but I don't know. But anyway, um, the reason is, let me show you. I see I love this page. Hold on, I'll try to get up. If I don't if I don't knock everything down. I have been this is on my list. Um, I don't even think it's on my list of 42, but I have all of this gorgeous kind of tropical seashell-esque wallpaper in several different shades of colors. And this is way too big for me. Let me see. Let me see a little bit. Um, so I thought about doing some kind of tropical, oceany, beachy, um, journals. And so I've got some papers and things like that, but I don't have, I mean, I live in Iowa. We don't have the ocean nearby, although I love the ocean. Um, but I thought I could use some of the images out of that to make some ephemera. So that is my goal. And I do plan to do this on camera at some point. Um, but like I said, it didn't even make my list of <laughs> um, items. Okay, so the next one, you guys know that uh, I have an affinity for horses. I used to show, and I've wanted to do a horse journal or equestrian journal for some time. And so this was in there, and it was one of the reasons I really wanted it. But uh, it is, these are, let's see, E. Joseph Draney, Draney. They're all by different people, but all by Maxton Publish Publishers. Uh, <clears throat> this one is 1950, uh, but I thought it was cool because it goes from like the Mustangs and the Wild Horses to, um, you know, your rodeo, buck and broncos, quarter horses. Most of our horses were all quarter horses. Actually, I think they all were, except once we had a pony. Um, this is interesting, an Indian... Cayuse, Cayuse, which to me I would call a paint, but I don't know, maybe it's different. Or it's oh, also known as a pinto, which is a Spanish word meaning paint. See, if you read Angela, you will find this out. <laughs> um, this was, uh, I had a horse, a Palomino Corner. His name was Chick, and that was the horse that I um, showed the most. He was awesome. He was also the one that... 
uh, was very patient and I was a gymnast and I would, um, we had a, a, a writing arena, which my mom could see out of the window and I would hop on, on her, on his back and I would try to do tricks and, you know, ride like I was a, in the circus or something. Pa very patient horse. Polo ponies, harness horses, steeplechaser, which for those of you in the UK, you're very familiar. I'd race across the country. A hackney, which I don't know the difference between a hackney and a Morgan. Because I thought Morgans also were high steppers, but maybe not. I don't know. Percheron. I think Dave used to have Percherons. My, um... The kid's grandpa actually had Percherons as well, and he would um, show them, like, they would, he, I don't know, he may still do it, um, take them, they would have, like, a, they would be hitched, and there was always a team, and then they would go out and do all kinds of fun little, little things in the ring. Uh, this was the other type of horse that we had, Appaloosa Quarters, which my mom and dad both had one. I rode my dad's quite a bit. His, her name was Blue, and we actually bred her um, quite a quite a few times and had some beautiful babies. Thoroughbreds, saddle horses. So I was, oh, no, well, we could do without the clown. <laughs> That's kind of a cute clown. I mean, and those two look really relatively non-threatening, so I guess they're not so bad. And then you got mules and a Shetland pony, but I just, I love this one. I thought it was super, super cute. So that one I will put it with my horse items. Someday I will get enough stuff and ephemera to make my horse journal. Uh, this one, it's in real bad shape, but it is so cool. And this is way before my, I think it's way before my time. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, oh yeah, 1954. <clears throat> but I feel like I had something like this. But here's what I love about it. Look at how, look at these big definitions and the wonderful colors. This could make such fantastic ephemera. It could make tags. Um, just so, so many things. So I've got a few things that I need to just like mass make. Just a bunch of ephemera. And I think this will have to go in that pile because um, I'm always looking when I do my 50s journals for things like this. And wow, like even, you know, for that um, 4th of July or Independence Journal project that I'm working on, this would be cute. So I love it. And like I said, you know, the cover's in some serious bad shape, but no worries. Then these were kind of a surprise. I got to get this reptile book out of my out of my vision, line of vision. I can't handle it. I don't know. I am deathly afraid of snakes, <clears throat> but I don't think as much as Dave. <laughs> we won't tell that I told that, but I'm pretty sure. There were three of these. They're called Look and Learn Books. I'm not sure. Oh, wait. These are all teacher's editions. They're not all Look and Learn. All around us, how do we know and look and learn? Well, let's just find out what they're about. <clears throat> so, teacher's edition. This is in really good shape. 1950. Oh, I love these that have the real photos with the bunny yabbit. <clears throat> so, what happens here with these teacher's edition? Okay, so there's some instructions to the teacher. Science in the first year of school. So, it must be kindergarten. And then it's got all kinds of Okay, so each page tells the teacher what you should do. Nice. And then here's what I'm assuming the pages look like for the children's edition with their... I don't know. Maybe maybe they were just sheets, worksheets. I'm not sure. But I did not expect this. Look at it. It's like somebody made this just for a junk journal. So you've got <clears throat> belly band options. You've got journal cards and tag options. You've got fussy cut options. There's more horses. Oh, look at that. 
we're getting there. Look at this. Like, the, it's phenomenal. More snakes. We can get rid of those. The farm scene, you know, and just, ugh. Oh, this is interesting. Do you see this? Okay, what's up? This isn't like the cow jumping over the moon. That's a little bit disturbing. I'm not, not really sure. But then we also have the turtles, the flying turtle and the dog walking on water. So I'm assuming they're supposed to figure out like one of these things is not like the other or which doesn't fit. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Oh my gosh, look at the bear. Again, this is one of those things that you could just make ephemera with one book. In fact, you know, I have the playlist, the Traveling Crafter playlist, where I talk about some of the things that I work on. One of these would be great to tuck in with my always go-to items. And you guys can check out all the fun things, my list of things I take with me all the time, and then some of the projects that I've taken. Well, that was a win. Oh, look at we got the seasons. I told you this is going to be a lot longer than some of the rest of them. Mm. Oh my gosh. I have not really looked at any of these. I mean, I opened up the front cover and then we got little Fanny the flower, flower shop owner. This is fabulous. Okay, well, let's hope that the other two are just as good. All around us with her with her little Scotty dog. So, we got all the notes to the teachers. Teacher. You could almost, like, there's enough pages in here. And this book, well, let's see how big it is. It's kind of big for a journal. I don't know, eight and a quarter, yeah, by ten and a half. Mm, although I I like the fact that, like, when I, I have a series of books that are, like, kind of like an encyclopedia kind of book. What are they called? Um, the Treasure, no, that's not it. I can't remember what they're called. But it's like a, a bunch of encyclopedia type things that I use and make collage books out of or idea books and things like that and they're all the same size so they all fit on my bookshelf and look the same so that's just me being OCD and weird but I mean if you like that and you're okay with that having a journal this size hardcover that would this would work oh my goodness this is very nature-esque oh, bugs <clears throat> little skunkies I hope can you guys hear that up there. It sounds like Zenny's still down here in the safety of her mama. <clears throat> Those are just too stinking cute. Oh, look at the meow, 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 meow. Oh, not happy with the blue jay. Those are so cute. And the baby birds. Oh my goodness. Quail. It's all, it looks like it's everybody and the babies. This is fantastic. Oh my gosh. I, you know, while I'm looking at these, um, I don't know why that just came to mind. I am telling you, I went to, um, Omaha this week and when I went on my way there I was like god I, like even trying to get out of the house I was like my head and my body are not matching like I couldn't things were not firing on all cylinders that day and my whole drive over there I was like oh my gosh what is wrong with me <clears throat> and I never really got back on track and then on my way home I don't know if it was just allergies or what the what the dealio was, but I left in the morning and I would think that the pollen counts weren't so bad. I was like, maybe I have something in my makeup that's like making my eyes water, but I wanted to poke my eyeballs out. They hurt so bad. And then they were running and I was trying to drive and they itched. 
I was like, what is it with these this drive to and fro to Omaha? Look at that. These are just awesome. Mm-mm-mm. I'm going to have to really give this some thought. Like, how can I best utilize it? How can I, like, stay focused, which is always a challenge, in one book and do as much justice to the images as possible? And then how do we know? How do we know? Um, yeah, so I know you don't need to know all that stuff about my eyeballs and my brain not functioning. But, gosh, you ever have those days and you're like, oh, my Lord. Oh, this one's interesting. This one has words with it. So see, for those of you who don't like spiders, this is much a much nicer way to look at them. They're garden trappers. <laughs> uh, we have a friend of ours and he's, you know, he's a manly man and uh, he hates spiders probably as much as Dave hates snakes. And so... Um, I'm, spiders and bugs don't bother me. Ugh, snakes, me. Look at those. Beautiful. How cute. I'm spending a lot of time on these, I know. But I'm telling you guys, if you ever find these, these are ones you have to get. I'll go back to the beginning and tell you. Now, these are the teacher's editions, which means that if they had a book that was the child's edition, I'm not sure what exactly it looks like. But... Uh, I mean, you can see kind of an example. Land and water, plants, things that roll. Okay, let's look at the let's look at the name of it again. And these are let's just they're all different names, but um basic studies uh, it's by Scott Forsman and Company, which are many of the books that you see from uh, educational books, guidebook for how do we know, I'm trying to give you a little more specifics. This is from 1952, but okay, come on, there's got to be a series or like a curriculum, if you will, by Wilbur Beaucamp or Bouchamp, Gertrude Crampton, and William S. Gray, reading director. Curriculum Foundation Series. That's all I got, guys. I'm sorry. But if you find anything like this, I would highly recommend you pick it right on up. Because um, that was a nice little surprise to me. Now, the last thing that I got. Um, okay, the reason I got these. It, this reminds me, when I was growing up, my uncle was, he went to school to be a teacher. And then um, continued to go to school to be a, a principal. And... I don't know if he was living with us then when he was, probably, because he, I mean, he might have been. But he would, when he was doing, like, um, his student teaching, he would bring me books like this home. And I would play teacher, like, for hours. And now I'm kind of not surprised that I'm a junk journaler because I used to keep, like, just like this, I would keep everything, like, all organized in my room. And my mom would be like, you are a pack rat. And I'm like, no, mom. I'm using these, but these are just so beautifully aged. I know it, like it doesn't do it justice in the, it might when, when I upload this, but from my view right now, you just can't tell how beautiful the pages are, but they don't need to be dyed. They can just be used as they are. And there's just, I don't know. This one doesn't have a cover, nor does this one. Oh, this one. Hold on. We got something going on here. Do we have two books in one? There's something here. Maybe this is the same. I don't know. But these three partially used books I think will be great to put in ephemera kits and share with all of my fellow artist friends. Oh, look at this. I mean, that really looks like somebody hand wrote that to a lot of these in there. The old woman and her pig. That's cute. So there were these, these three. And 
have I looked at these? I don't remember. Okay, so these are, I wonder if these are the, so Think and Do books and the More, Fri More Friends and Neighbors. You are familiar probably with the Friends and Neighbor books. Uh, I haven't done any research on these at all yet, but also Scott Forsman and Company. To accompany more friends and neighbors, the basic reader number two. So this is the Curriculum Foundation series. So maybe we can, that will give us some. And then this is the teacher's edition because it says things like, to promote the ability to read new story material independently, to give practice in combining meanings, clues with the identification of consonant sounds and attacking new work words. And, oh, What's this? Chenille Craft Jr. Complete Instruction Book. Well, that's nice. I love Chenille. Within all of these pages. Now, these these weren't like the ones that I had when, you know, my uncle would give them to me. But, um, because they're way, way, way older. But, oh, I love them. And there were one... This is, okay, so this is different. So this one has the sledding, little sledding lady. This one has them on a carousel. Let me smell. Yeah, they smell very vintage. When I can smell it, you know that it's vintage. <laughs> this one's a little more, the paper's a little bit different. And obviously you can tell the coloring is, well, maybe not. It seems to me like it's different paper though. This is the basic reader number four, times and places. This is daily drills, grade four, and then grade three. Well, here, let's start with grade three. Uh-oh. So lots of fun things to go into the ephemera kits. But these two will go in with my concoction to <clears throat> descent the vintage smell. Lots of clowns in this one. Uh, you know, I'm telling you. Kids these days need to to learn this. My kids actually know, but that's because they have I you know they always have had to do thank yous, and they uh, Landon just got doing done doing all of his invitations and thank yous for graduation. Um, but I know they teach kids this when they're younger, but <clears throat> they need to be writing some letters more often because. They just forget, I'm telling you. So that was my um, haul for this week from my auction haul. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, give me some time because I want to make sure I try to make these smell a little bit better before I put them into the into the shop. Um, but I hope that you are having a very crafty week. And hopefully you're doing some fun um, thrifting, estate sales, whatever it may be in your area, flea markets, um, and finding some treasure as well to use in your art projects. So until next time, my friends, remember to take time to just be, and we will talk to you soon. Cheers.